Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Jake from over at Level Up here with Parker Siegfried. Um, played with him at Ohio State. He was our goalkeeper. So um, figured it'd be cool to bring him on, talk directly to some of the goalkeepers that we have. Um, just wanted to see, Parker, if you could run through um, your path to where you currently are. Uh, just fill us in on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing soccer forever. Uh, was really fortunate to get in with like the youth national team really early on. So I was in the youth national pool when I was um, like when it first starts. So you 14. Uh, so from there, I kind of got found just in Ohio. And then I was with the crew Academy for five years um, in and out with the national team a little bit. Um, stayed home, as you said, played at Ohio state, uh, big Buckeye fan. So I wasn't really going to go anywhere else. And then, a red shirt of my freshman year. Uh, we had a really good goalkeeper there. So I was there for five. Um, started the next four. Pretty good career. We had some good years. We had some bad years, but um, individually did all right. And then got drafted to New York City. So this past January, um, was with them for two, three weeks. Uh, didn't work out. It's really tough to make the jump from collegiate soccer to the MLS. Super tough. Um, some kids can do it really easily, but most kids can't. So then I went on trial with a few USL clubs and then found a home down here in Georgia with Tormenta FC in the USL. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much it up until now. Perfect. And then um, I know a lot of times when I talk to kids, they're asking, you know, with goalkeepers, you don't usually start out playing goalkeeper right away. It's usually you're on the field and then you transition slowly into goalkeeper and it's the tough decision of should I try to keep going forward playing on the field or should I switch full-time to goalkeeper? Um, what was that thought process for you? When did you make that transition and what were the, the things that went into that decision? Um, yeah, so I made the switch. I, I was like, when I was maybe, so I played soccer from when you can start when you're five or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was just running around playing on the field, uh, loved it. And when I was like 11 or so, I just like jumped in goal one day and kind of had a lot of fun. Um, and I was pretty good at it naturally. I just kind of was willing to jump around and had more fun doing it than most kids probably do. So started playing it like every once in a while. And then I did ODP back in the ODP days, um, when that was the thing. So, and just did it as a goalkeeper because I thought, that I was better at that than I was at the field. And I was actually pretty good at, uh, I played the six for my club team back then. It was kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I did it as a goalkeeper and I made it onto the Ohio South state team. And then from there I made it to the regional camp and pulled over camp. And then that was when the national team stuff started with it. And so I, at that point it was kind of, I felt like I didn't even really have a choice. It was like, all right, well I'm doing this now. Um, but I like really found a passion in it. And so from there, I kind of just kept, kept running with it. Um, but I'm still like the first one to start five V twos at practice Rondo's before, like I love playing with all my feet. Um, like I'm just as happy like to go out with the boys and like play small sided without goalkeepers, uh, even today. So I made the switch full time when I was about 12, but still love doing it all today. Yeah, and that's actually a good transition for what I wanted to talk about next. Um, nowadays, U.S. soccer trying to keep the ball on the floor a little bit more, just the style switch more so to the overseas. How important is it to have solid feet as a goalkeeper, whether it's D1 colleges looking at you, you know, to get your foot in the door? You really need both, don't you, right now? Yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, so I've kind of seen all – I feel like I've seen all the levels now in the U.S. Um, I've seen – I've been in MLS preseasons. I used to go in with the crew all the time when I was younger um, with the first team. I've been in a couple with a couple of USL teams, League One Championship. I played in the MPSL for two summers. Division One, played there forever. Played with a ton of D2, D3 players. Um, it's very clear, like, the levels and the distinction between how, like, what keeps you from getting to the next. And I think consistently, like, it's always going to be their ability to play out and be calm with the ball at their feet and be able to pick out, you know, passes that <laughs> goalkeepers maybe a lot of times can't. So whether that's like finding an outside back in the air, like just with two touches or using both feet, um, things like that, it's um, 
definitely like one of the biggest difference makers, especially if you're trying to get recruited to go play college. If, if they show up and they watch you play and you make a few good saves, awesome. But um, there's probably a hundred other kids they saw within the past month that can make those same saves. So if you can do that and you can complete every pass that you make, um, like th those are, that's a huge difference maker. Okay. Yeah, that's what we've seen, especially with the college. That, that was where I really noticed it the most was, um, you know, academy, the goalkeepers had solid feet. But then when you got to college, it seemed like, let alone the goalkeepers had great feet, but the goalkeeper coaches also put a pretty strong emphasis when you guys were at practice of playing out with your feet, the one-time touches, just trying to be as calm as possible on the ball. Because, you know, you can easily just turn one over and down 1-0 from a simple yeah. mistake. And the more you watch college soccer, like it, the more you realize that there's a lot of teams that really do try and play um, and try and like have a possession style based <clears throat> game that they play. So like, it's, it's so important. And, and if you can, if you can't, I see this all the time. It's like when I've been in with academies now, like when I go train um, in the off season or whatever, like kids that can't kick the ball, like you can't train and you can't train in a group together. Like if, if every time you kick the ball, it's missing the goal or something like that, like coaches can't stand that. So yep. like the more consistent you are with your feet and being able to put the ball in a certain spot every time, like it just helps you so much. Yeah. Others around you too. And then last one that I have for you is it's easy to say for a field player, like what can kids be doing to stand out? Um, I think, for field players, it's obviously like control the controllables of conditioning and, you know, putting the work in the gym to where the gym is important. But again, if you have that fitness, then that's going to set you apart just because it's, you know, one thing that you can um, do on your own time. What would you, would that, I mean, still important to have fitness for a goalkeeper, but what do you think that, that one thing would be for a goalkeeper? Something that you can like, you know, practice quite a bit on your own, show the coaches that you're going above and beyond outside of, you know, the normal average goalkeeper. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can, we already talked about it. If your feet are better than most, like that's a huge way to stand out. But so a different one. And so I was talking to a college coach actually like two or three days ago and he was asking me about a player that I've, uh, that I know pretty well, a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, like, yeah, I know he's this, I know he's this, but like, what's his communication like? Yeah. Um, and so when you, and, and um, I was honest, I said like, I, I don't know how good it is to be honest. Like, so that is something that's going to set you apart one because like <laughs> it's going to make you look a lot better if you can communicate effectively you're going to be put in bad situations less often yeah two um it's just like having that presence because i mean there might be a game where you go through and you don't even make a save like you you don't really do anything but if you communicate effectively that whole time and let's say you're at a showcase or you're playing a club game, there's a, there's a coach on the side, um, that they're going to remember that. They're going to remember, oh, yeah, well, he didn't make a save, but um, he or she didn't make a save, but they did communicate super effectively. And it's something that I feel like it's tough to coach because it really only happens in games. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, small-sided and, like, <clears throat> level side in training. But if – so, like, it's something that the goalkeeper has to really take on themselves to understand what needs to be said and how to say it um reading the game all that stuff so if there's two qualities that you could get to try and stand out it would be better feet better with the ball at your feet and communicating better yeah and i think off of the communication like you said it's tough to learn that in practice but even when we were practicing you and chris frosh were, were probably the loudest goalkeepers i've ever played with so if you can get even any, you know, practice while you are in, you know, a training session or anything like that, it might not be the real thing, but it'll still help out, you know, quite a bit. Yeah. Or you look um, at, I mean, all three that you played with in college and thinking Chris, Evan, Laura at Michigan, Adam yeah. Grimace at Michigan, they all, they're all really good. And yeah. their feet are some of their best qualities. Evan Laura's feet are incredible. So Almost a field player, basically. Yeah, maybe like yeah. better than most when it comes to hitting yeah. like like a ball with the like long pings. one forty yard pass. It's he's he's fantastic. So unreal with it, yeah. And then so last one outside of goalkeepers, we've sort of done this one a little bit um, for some high school kids with all this going on right now. It might be a little bit tougher to get recruited. What would be you know one thing that you think kids could be doing during this time 
whether that be, you know, trying to contact coaches or finding schools that fit their, you know, fit their guidelines of what they're looking for, what would you recommend for someone trying to stay ahead of the game to get recruited to, to a school to play soccer? Um, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this two ways. So first, like as a player, um, and this is something that I constantly work on, constantly need to be working on, is being able to move your feet quicker. Um, you can practice that in your backyard right now if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, like it will never hurt you. It will only help. Um, positioning is more important than anything. But like if that's off at all, the only thing that's going to help you is if your feet can move you to the ball quicker. Yeah. So working on that on your own is huge. Um, but then when it comes to recruiting, I would say <laughs> reaching out to coaches now is probably a really good thing. Um, I mean, they don't have much to do either. So mm -hmm. it might even be more willing to look at emails and highlights now than ever before. Um, a guy, guy had, like I said, I had some coaches call me the other day to talk to me about players because they can't go watch him now. Yeah. So, and um, it's still fully open communication. You can call, you can email if you're past that certain grade. So basically just no, no in-person visits, but everything else is status quo for the recruiting side of things. And I would say that, if if residential camps and stuff like that do happen this summer that if you are really interested in a college I mean, I went to Ohio State's residential camp they saw me at 30 academy games at least they saw me they I had a coach that coached at Ohio State um like I I didn't have to but even going to that and like showing yourself even more like in a training environment and all that stuff um, showing, showing them how you act off the field is really important. So if you're really interested in a college, um, you might hear one or two things about residential camps, but if you go and you show really well, like they're very valuable. Exactly. And they're always watching at those, they, let alone the coaches. Um, the players often are pretty involved with it and they usually will have, like we've been asked multiple times, what do you guys think of this player? What do you think of that player? So yeah, they right. do have input because they have to come in and fit in with the team right away. So if they see some things that are, you know, you're going out of your way to be a better player, then that's only going to stand out. Same goes the opposite way. It's just going to make it tougher to commit if, you know, you aren't doing the, the right things at all times. Yeah. No, yeah. Those camps, like, there is a lot of, there's a lot of weight put into what the players think of the players in the camp, what the current college players think. So. 100%. Going to be their yeah. teammates for four years. So. Yeah. That'll be that, but. All right, I think that was all that all that I really had. So, Parker, thanks again for the time. I'm sure we'll have you on again pretty soon. But um, till then, hopefully we can get some questions, some more goalkeeper questions in specific, and then come back to get those answered. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Super excited to be a part of it.